Yo, what's good y'all? I'm back with another hit for you guys and girls. In this video, I'm going to be going into full detail on how you can create your shot and have the potential to become a great shooter. Enough talking, let's get into it. One of the most major things is to shoot your own shot. There are too many people out here that's trying to copy Steph Curry's form, trying to copy Klay Thompson's form by exact every single detail. Now it's okay to steal some of their techniques from them or try something out, but if you're trying to copy their exact form by body angles, set points, and all that other stuff, you will fail. The next thing to do is watch other great shooters. It's good to watch some of the best shooters and see how they like to shoot or if you want to try to copy and emulate their form, now that's fine. See where they like to load the ball, see where their release point is, see how their offhand is. It's okay to try and copy what they do, but it really comes to a point where if it's uncomfortable, then it doesn't work for you, man. Like, it's plain and simple. The next thing when it comes to becoming a great shooter is being able to shoot your shot in any situation. Situations from pulling up off the dribble, a catch and shoot shot, coming off a pin down, shooting the shot moving to the left or to the right, and all that good stuff. Your form should be capable to do all of the following that I just mentioned without tweaking or changing your shot. So if you have to change your form just to shoot a catch and shoot shot coming off a pin down screen, then you're doing something wrong when it comes to your mechanics. Speaking of mechanics, we'll get into more of that a bit later. Another major thing when it comes to shooting is your work ethic. Are you willing to give up your video game time or your party time to be in the gym grinding it out? Now don't get me wrong, it's okay to have fun every once in a while, but you can't be doing that every day. You must make sacrifices. Getting in the gym three times a month ain't gonna cut it. You have to be in the gym daily if you want to become a great and have consistency to shoot the rock consistently. Not only just working out, but playing in real games. Yes, getting those shots up alone is great and all, but being able to be in a game situation will help you too become more confident and help you gain a better feel for a real game. Before we talk about our mechanics, let's talk about having a quick release. Now I'm not saying you have to have a quick release like one of the Splash Bros, but your shot must be quick and not slow for you to pull off your shot at the next level. Whether in high school, college, or the big leagues, having a quick release is important. Because without it, you will have a hard time trying to get your shot off against great defenders. Feel free to peep my drills and breakdowns on how to quicken your release. I got plenty on my channel, man. Now, let's talk about our mechanics, shall we? We'll start off with our base. Some players like a wide base, and other players like a narrow base. Now, we do have some coaches out there telling us to square our feet, which I wouldn't teach. Now, if you're a great shooter already and your feet are square, then keep at it, keep going. I wouldn't tell you to change it, unless you would want to change it. No matter what base you choose, it all depends on you. Do what feels best for you. Well, some of y'all may be wondering, should you jump up and down, or should you use the sweep and sway? The sweep and sway is when your feet sweep forward where your back naturally falls back. I would say both. It's okay to jump up and down on your shot, and it's also okay to use the sweep and sway. If you notice some of the best shooters to play, they both at times shoot up and down, and also at times use the sweep and sway. Usually the further they are from the basket, the more farther their sweep will be on their shot, and that's fine. It all depends on you, how far you sweep. Just make sure you don't over sweep. Lastly, for our base, be sure to start and land on the balls of your feet for better balance. Let's talk about our loading spot or our shot pocket. The shot pocket is an area where we like to hold the basketball before getting into our release. It's best to load the ball low for a smoother release and it'll help us with our release timing because if we bring the ball up too early to our set point, the ball will have to pause until our legs get ready to spring up, which will equal a two motion shot. If you ever paid attention to where some of the best hoopers like to load the ball, you'll see them load the ball by their hips, thigh, or even by their belly button. For more info, I have a detailed video about this topic in my recent videos. Please, please, please be sure to peep it. A question that a lot of hoopers may ask is, should I shoot a one motion shot or should I shoot a two motion shot? To be simple with you, it's up to you. 
Although one motion shooting has its perks for more range and power, having a two motion shot has its perks as well. For younger players, I would recommend a one motion shot. Shooting your shot in one motion is much easier and requires less strength and effort to get the ball to the hoop no matter what age. Now if you're very 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 young, you may not have the strength to even shoot the ball to the hoop and you're like, how are you going to say it's more easier? Well comparing the shots, a one motion shot and a two motion shot, a one motion is more easier. Is it okay to have both? Yes, yes indeed. Many hoopers like to shoot their overall shot in one motion while shooting two motion shots in the mid-range area and that's fine if you look at some of the best hoopers they have two different jump shots for more info i have a detailed video about this certain topic in my recents as well please be sure to peep the heat so hand placement where should we put our hands on the ball here's a simple answer for you it's up to you there's different places around the ball where you can place your hand and the best way to go that i suggest is having your index finger in the middle of the basketball. Now you can put your index, your middle finger, or split your finger in the middle of the basketball. It all depends on what type of shooter you are and what feels great for you. Since we're talking about releases, let's keep going. There are four different types of releases. The index finger release, where we release the ball off our index finger. The middle finger release, where we release the ball off our middle finger. Then we have the split finger release, where we use both our index and our middle finger to release the ball. And then we have the traditional five fingers down where we use all of our fingers to release the ball. When it comes to this area, there's really no perfect release. You just have to experiment and see what works best for you. I don't know if you noticed yet, but when it comes to shooting, it's mainly a comfort thing. If you can find out what mechanics works best for you, then that's the key. Finding out what finger works best for you is vital because if you're releasing the ball off the wrong finger, it can hurt your shot's accuracy. There's some more info on accuracy, but we'll talk about that later. Let's talk about our shooting release points for one motion shooters and for two motion shooters, our set point. We won't all have the perfect eyebrow set point because we weren't all built the same. We all don't have the same strength like a Kyrie or a Damian Lillard. When it comes to our shooting points, I would suggest you to release the ball wherever it feels comfortable for you. But here's the thing, if you are a bit older and have the strength, I recommend you to try to raise your set point up if you can and not stick to a release point that's at your chest. There's many younger players that don't have any strength to shoot the ball from their face and have to shoot it from their chest, and that's what they're comfortable with. Until you begin to grow older and gain more strength, that'll be the best time to work on raising it. Not only that, but over time, you probably won't even notice, but your point will go up over time as you begin to grow older and grow stronger. Now let's talk about our offhand. Our shooting offhand, or our guide hand, should have no interference with our shot unless you have a thumb flick. Wait, JP, is a thumb flick okay? A thumb flick is something that some of the best shooters have, but it's not something I would want a player to try and input into their shot. An extra push on the ball with your guide hand will, yes, give you more power, but it will make the ball backspin different and can cause the ball to spin in different directions moving left or right. Now, if you are a player out there that has a thumb flick already, and I'm talking about you're a knockdown sniper from deep, I wouldn't change your shot unless you really want to. You never know. It might even help you become better. Overall, for any beginners out there or any player in general, don't use your offhand to shoot the rock. It's only there for support and balance to help hold the basketball. After your release, you have the option to either have your guide hand point up towards the ceiling or have it point towards the rim. Having your guide hand point towards the rim will give the ball extra guidance towards the rim. Let's talk about our shooting elbow. Most likely, if you are very young, you will probably have a chicken wing due to the lack of strength, which is okay. But please, please, please do not try to shoot from deep if you do not have your form down packed. Too many players nowadays want to shoot from beyond the high school three-point line when they don't even have their own form down. Get your form down first and then practice those shots. Due to our body structures, we all won't be able to tuck our elbow in all the way like a gnash, and that's okay. Just do your best and just try to keep your elbow in and not out as possible. When it comes to keeping it in, it all depends on a few different things and the two main keys are our hand placement 
and our feet. If our hands are placed on the ball sideways or different than normal, you will have a flare, and by turning our feet, we allow our elbow to be aligned towards the rim for better accuracy. But JP, how much should we turn? Well, we just gotta go out there and figure it out. Plain and simple. For the last few things, there are some little big things that you need to take seriously. Especially if you're one of those players who struggle with consistency. This is one major key that should help with the problem. And that's by extending your shooting release all the way. A lot of players tend to shoot the ball and have a bent elbow, which is a big no-no. After releasing the ball, your shooting elbow needs to be locked and fully extended. Now I'm not saying you have to hold your release all the way until it goes through the net, but you need to at least snap that elbow and let it extend for a great rotation, better muscle memory in the future, and also it gives you a bit more power. Now let's talk about one huge factor when it comes to accuracy. Players must know that wherever your release goes, the ball goes. So if you tend to bring your release to the right side of your body, or you try to swing it left, the ball will follow. Too many players are releasing the ball, then once it leaves their hand, they move their shooting hand to the side. It may look like a swaggy thing, but that swaggy thing can hurt your accuracy. Be sure to keep your shooting arm and hand straight towards the rim for better accuracy. A straight shot is a great shot. Shout out to Pro Shot. <laughs> Lastly, let's talk about the mental side. As players, we tend to overthink a lot. And when it comes to shooting, it's just a pill for disaster. Even pros have times where they overthink things. Now I'm not a mind reader, but I guarantee you that Curry had times as well in his MVP season where he was thinking so hard he couldn't even hit a shot to save his life. A lot of times we tend to think about Ah, oh, I gotta make sure I shoot in one motion or oh, I gotta release the ball with my eyebrow. When it comes to working on your form in practice, it's okay to slow down and think about your form and improve it. But when it comes to game days and you're thinking too hard about your shot during a game, that'll only give you a better chance to miss your shots, which will result in frustration. And if your body gets tense during a workout or a game, you're only hurting yourself. Thank you all for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the full breakdown on how you can not only create, but improve your form. Be sure to follow me on my socials and be sure to stay hungry and humble. This stuff looks and sounds easy, but when it comes to developing your form, it's tough. Nothing happens overnight. Remember that. It's your boy JP Productions, and I'm out. Yeah.